Hi, I'm Louise from the Ontario Science Centre. It's summer, the sun is shining, and everybody wants to head out to enjoy the great weather. But before you head out, doctors warn that you need some kind of sun protection. And why is that? Well, the thing is, sunlight contains ultraviolet light, which is just outside of the visible light spectrum, what the human eye can perceive. So we can't see ultraviolet light, but it has the energy to damage living cells. So when you go out and you're unprotected, it will damage your living skin tissue. And this damage will accumulate through your childhood and teen years, and that damage doesn't show up until later in life. But the thing is, sun damage is associated with an increased risk for skin cancer. So in this case, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. So what can we do? One option for sun protection is to use a sunscreen. Now there's two types of sunscreen ingredients that are available. The first group of ingredients are these synthetic organic chemicals. These are human-made, carbon-based chemicals that have the ability to absorb the energy of incoming ultraviolet radiation and disperse it in the form of infrared radiation, also known as heat energy. Here's an example here. This is avobenzone, and we can find it here in this sunscreen spray, along with some other synthetic organic chemicals like octosalate and octocrylene. The other group of chemicals are the mineral oxides. Here's an example of a mineral oxide cream. So the oxides that we can use are zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. Now mineral oxides are able to absorb the energy of ultraviolet radiation, and they're also able to scatter and reflect a small portion of that incoming light. With both types of sunscreen ingredients, they have to be applied to the skin about 15 minutes before sun exposure and that allows the sunscreen formulation to dry down and form a uniform coat on the skin so you don't get patchy coverage. Sun Protection Factor, or SPF for short, is an attempt to quantify how much protection a sunscreen can provide. Many people think that SPF is an approximation of how much time that you can spend in the sun before getting a sunburn. So for example, SPF 30 means that you could spend 30 times longer in the sun before getting a sunburn, but this is not true. SPF is actually an estimate of how much UV radiation a sunscreen can absorb and thus prevent from reaching living skin tissue and the amount of time that you spend in the sun is just one factor that determines that amount. The other factor is light intensity, and that's affected by time of year, time of day, weather conditions, and how far away you might be from the equator. Because most sunscreens become less visible or invisible once applied to the skin, it's really difficult to visualize the amount of UV radiation that you have been exposed to. One way to do it is to wear beads or stickers that contain a photosensitive dye that changes color upon exposure to UV radiation. But just be aware, these items can't tell you if you have applied enough everywhere where it's needed, if you have even coverage, or if you missed a spot. Doctors recommend using a broad spectrum sunscreen that is rated SPF 30 or higher. You might think the higher the number, the better the protection, but actually, SPF 50 can filter out about 98% of incoming UV radiation compared to SPF 30, which can filter out about 96.7% of incoming UV radiation. So it's only a marginal difference. Sunscreens have to be applied very generously. The Canadian Dermatology Association advises application of one palmful for each arm and for each leg. In practice, that's about 30 milliliters or two tablespoons for the arms and legs. And no matter what the SPF rating is, all sunscreens will wear off eventually, especially if you happen to be sweating or if you go swimming. So they need to be reapplied every two hours. Sunscreens will eventually wash off and make their way into nearby bodies of water. There's mounting concern over the effect of sunscreens on the organisms that live in and around aquatic environments. There's evidence suggesting that these synthetic sunscreens, oxybenzone and benzophenone 2, are toxic to coral reefs and are compounding the effects of climate change, which is causing the oceans to become warmer and more acidic. All of these factors are leading to coral reefs bleaching and dying. 
there's also concern that nanoparticles of the mineral oxides may be damaging to aquatic ecosystems. For sun protection, sunscreen is just one option that should be combined with other actions. Before you head out, check the weather report and look for the predicted UV index. If it's three or higher, you'll need some form of sun protection. Try to avoid sun exposure between the hours of 11 a.m. and 3 p.m., especially around noon. That's when the sun's rays are at their most intense. Along with sunscreen, think about wearing your shade, and that means long sleeves and pants. There's UV protective clothing, like this jacket. You can also wear clothing that's made out of a tightly woven opaque fabric. Wear a broad brimmed hat. Think about wearing UV protective sunglasses. You can also carry a parasol or umbrella. We're really interested to know how you're practicing sun safety, so please send in your photos and comments. Thanks so much for watching.